Shaw University Radio 88.9 FM on WSHA presents Upfront. Now here's your host. Well, good good morning and thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that great music this morning. And I also hope that you're remembering that WSHA 88.9 FM is your public radio station on the historic campus of Shaw University, which means your donations provide all of the great music, information, and uh, conversation that, you're, that you have an opportunity to enjoy, uh, also to give us feedback. So this morning, we have another great opportunity for us to learn and to share, uh, to answer your questions, and hopefully, as we always say is our objective, empower you to do those things that are important to you. So what do you know about Dr. Pauli Murray? Hmm, a name that's been I'd say kind of well known around not only our local area, uh, but also across our state, our country, and even internationally. We have guests with us this morning who are going to share not only some of the highlights from her life, uh, some of the highlights of how her life has empowered others, but to also share how um, lives of people who do great work often engender other art. And one of our guests this morning who has been with us before is an artist who uh, has just been so impressed by her life and her legacy and her writing that he's, um, he's penned a number of things that we think you will enjoy. Uh, in the music uh, line. So we're going to say good morning to our guests. We have an additional guest who will join us later, but right now in the studio we have with us uh, Thomas Rashad Easley. Uh, good Dr. Easley. Good morning. Uh, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. And you? I'm well, thanks. And we also have with us Professor Michelle Lanier. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure to have you this morning, and Dr. Lau will be joining us later. So let's just refresh our memories uh, for some and get to know new guests uh, with Professor Lanier. Uh, my good doctor, uh, lyricist, um, scholar, professor, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself again. Okay. Uh, well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am originally from Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. Came Birmingham. to Raleigh, North Carolina in 2004. Um, I t teach at NC State University. I'm the diversity director for one of the colleges there, the College of Natural Resources. Uh, I am a hip hop artist. Um, I lead a church now on NC State's campus uh, called Peace Church. Peers entering acceptance towards Christ eternally. I know you know about that, Ms. Howard. Exactly. Uh, other things about me, I mean, um, I'm an Eagle Scout. Um, I love the outdoors. I do a lot of work in the community with children in particular, uh, teaching them about natural resources and where, 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 where the natural resources come from and how we're to be better stewards uh, of those uh, things. And then I'm also a business owner. I have a business. It's called the Easley Branch, uh, Easley Branch LLC. And uh, I also work with, uh, in particular, two artists on that. On that uh, and I've had one of them on the show before, uh, which is B. And uh, now we have uh, a new uh, a new artist by the name of Mitch Durrell, uh, and both of them were students of mine uh, year, years ago, and I actually think that they're better artists than I am. <laughs> so I love working with them because uh, they, I think, are stretching uh, the music forward. So we uh, uh, welcome you again back in this space to share with us. And Professor Lanier, tell us a little bit about who you are. Well, I have to first of all say that I am a granddaughter of a Shaw Bear. Yay, Shaw Bear! So this is a part of my heritage being here. I also am the founding director of the North Carolina African American Heritage Commission, which is based in the State Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. I'm an adjunct professor at the Center for Documentary Studies, where I teach 
oral history, and also documentary ethics. Uh, I'm a folklorist by training. Grew up in South Carolina because my grand, one of my grandfathers was retired from the military there. But my roots are here in North Carolina, so I very much feel like I've come home. Um, I've been here since 97, so I've been here for a while. And I think the Center for Documentary Studies, is that affiliated with Duke University? That's right. Okay, Duke University. Yes. So, yeah, we're well represented uh, across the uh, academy, across the triangle this morning. So we're glad to have you. So you all may say we heard um, pastor and hip hop artist um, and professor Eagle Scout loving the outdoors all in the same um, descriptors for our guests this morning so how did that happen tell us how a hip hop artist is also a pastor who loves the outdoors I think it's because I'm crazy no I'm kidding, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I mean well I was a uh, as a child, uh, my grandparents exposed me to the outdoors. They had gardens, uh, and so they taught me, you know, how we had our food off the land. Mm -hmm. I became a Boy Scout. I got off to school. I majored in forestry. I got a scholarship to uh, do forestry, and I was uh, able to work for the Forest Service. So I worked out of Montana for for a little bit, came back home. And the thing that I did leave out of my intro is that I'm the son of a civil rights activist, uh, Marion Orange Easley. Um, and then I'm a, the nephew of the first field lieutenant appointed by Dr. Martin Luther King, which is Reverend Dr. James Orange. Okay. So as I was being as I was being raised, I was raised being taught about my history, in particular about the civil rights movement, and uh, and about and about uh, my uh, our heritage. So I'm learning about nature. I'm learning about religion. I'm learning about the civil rights movement. I'm learning what it means to be black, to be African American, to be a male in the South, in particular. And so by the time I come to North Carolina and I get a job that is dealing with diversity and bringing people into forestry and people who look like me and who don't look like me, a lot to me it was just like the difference between tacit knowledge versus explicit knowledge. You know, I learned a lot of things, but tacit I lived it. And in and in African American, you know, culture in particular, we pass history down a lot through storytelling and speaking and watching each other. So that's how I learned a lot uh, as far as how to be, you know, how to be the person that I am today. And to bring all of those various talents together for good. And that's another reason why we enjoy the work that you do. Uh, the work that you do reaches um, generations. And I think that it empowers generations. So we're, we're happy to uh, continue to as we said, refresh our memories for some and then introduce you, hopefully, to other listeners. So how does uh, Professor Lanier get interested in film and particularly documentary film and even explain for us um, this whole career of being uh, a person engaged in folklore? What, what exactly is that? Well, it's really... Um definitely a, a couple of places that launched me into my calling. Um, it's definitely more than a career. Um, first, one of the things that I get excited about when I talk about documentary mm -hmm. is to explode the notion that all documentaries are films. So we have students um, and uh, colleagues over at the Center for Documentary Studies who are writers, okay. who are performance artists, who are muralists, musicians, uh, definitely people who do radio and audio documentary work, uh, and we have ph photographers. And so that's one of the things that excites me the most about the field of documentary is we have exploded the walls off of, of the box. Um, and we're saying how many different kinds of ways can we document the human experience, and tell the stories of, of what it means to, to be human. For me, that passion comes from telling the stories of blackness, um, the diaspora experiences. And for me, that story starts at my grandmother's kitchen table. Anne Grace, who was born in Goldsboro, North Carolina, uh, was a woman who was born, as the old folks say, out of generation. So she was the only young person around her grandfather's household and had a chance to absorb 
those older stories. And she blessed her progeny, her descendants, by sharing those stories, particularly over hot grits or salmon croquettes or liver pudding in her kitchen. And growing up in Columbia, South Carolina, she always made sure we understood that our roots were in North Carolina, we lived in South Carolina. And so I'm really a Carolina girl. Good. Um, she poured over all of her grandchildren pride and dignity, which was so important, particularly growing up under a Confederate flag in Columbia, South Carolina. Exactly. So that's quite interesting because when I think of documentary, and maybe there are others who have similar thoughts, we think of film Absolutely. and maybe photographs. We don't, I didn't really put it in a context of plays or other kinds of, um, of art right. that um, tells the story of the people. So that, that's a good uh, highlight for me well, today. Well, that's one of the reasons I'm sitting next to this gentleman, Rashad. What he's doing through his music, through hip hop, is he's telling the stories of our people. So he is a hip hop documentarian. That is quite interesting. I like that. Hmm. So we're going to also talk a little bit about this wonderful person that I even had to reacquaint myself with Dr. Pauli Murray because I was saying, okay, he's very excited. And a couple of flashes came across my mind, um, particularly her, um, her work in the um, Episcopal, being a, uh, uh, an Episcopalian, an Episcopal priest, um, the whole idea of being a civil rights activist. And then I thought, you know, feminism, and I went back to look at my notes and just go over some various little short um, bios of her life. And I'm thinking this woman has um, so many firsts and has mm -hmm. so much of a story mm -hmm. that she's told and shared and probably much more to share right. that it is just phenomenal. So tell us how you decided or got engaged with this particular um i'm gonna say icon almost yes, yes. Of, that's, that's appropriate um, yes uh, of our times how were you reintroduced or introduced to her and her work technically that's why i was sitting next to professor lanier i got you uh, when we first met i think about three years ago and um you know, uh, with the work that she was doing with the commission and the work that I'm doing with diversity in the community, which uh -huh. she's all over, she more over the state than I am. And uh, we were in Durham and she asked me if I'd ever heard, you know, of this, of this individual. And then I was like, actually, I told her, honestly, I have, but I don't know much. She told me about this mural. Uh -huh. I saw the mural. I was like, okay, all right. And then she just started giving me, just only gave me like a couple of facts, you know, mm -hmm. about the bus and then with her being a priest. Mm -hmm. And then from there I went, Wait a minute. How come I don't know about her? So then I started doing my own research, mm -hmm. and you know, and it was stuff she had already said, but now it just made it even more like it just it just made my eyes pop. Like, wait a minute, why don't we talk about her more? So as soon as I started learning more, I started teaching it in my classes at NC State. I started uh -huh. talking about St. Murray there, mm -hmm. teaching the students so that you know when we talk about uh, like in my orientation, my USC class, mm -hmm. the MDS class, mm -hmm. about how do we matriculate to being at NC State, and mm -hmm. you deal with these different challenges, whether you're African American, woman, Hispanic, Latino. I'm like, here's an individual who coined the phrase Jane Crow, who Jane lived through Crow. this time yeah. and still made it, wanted to go to schools, couldn't get in, went somewhere else. Mm -hmm. she, she didn't let people close doors in her face and then the door stayed closed. No, she went and made a different path. Exactly. And then from that, you know, the more I teach them and seeing what's happening to them, they turn around and teach me. I was able to participate in a sermon slam uh -huh. uh, last year out, out in Durham. Professor Lanier was in that slam as well. And it was just a five minute, you had, you had to do five minutes, you know, so it wasn't like church. Right. Where you can go 20 minutes to 60. Mm -hmm. Or lying. So or I only, I, oh, yeah, I only got one more thing to say. <laughs> and it turns into five things to say. Just exactly. lying in the pulpit. I know. Anyway, <laughs> we only had five minutes. And then you just went over, pulled the mic, Apollo style. And I did it. And it was, it, all, of, all of the presentations were wonderful. And I think that St. Mary would have been happy because she was honored that night. But, it blows my mind. I said, mm -hmm. sainthood even? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I was contacted for some students that were doing a film 
uh, at Duke the following semester to be interviewed because of what I did ah, at the Sermon Slam. Okay. And I said, okay, sure, that's great. I'm honored to do anything around, you know, Polly Murray. Mm -hmm. And as they interviewed me as a hip hop artist, I was like, do you want a song for your film or a song or two? And they said, that, that sounds like a good idea. We'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. and I said, okay, cool. Well, they got back to me two months later. I was out in California at a conference, and they said, yeah, we would like a song. I contacted one, another one of my former students. You know, and NC State's been a great place because they've helped us build this legacy of doing things in the community. DJ Green, uh -huh. uh, he's a football player at State too. Okay. And uh, and I and I and I uh, asked him if he would, you know, send me a couple of beats. He sent me six. I was only gonna give him one song. I ended up writing six. Okay. And then he gave me five more, and I just kept going. And I was like, no, I it, I couldn't stop writing because this is such a wonderful individual to do music about, and as soon as I came back to North Carolina, we got busy. Mm -hmm. I pulled the whole Dean's List back together, and we and everybody is on this this album, and Professor Lanier gave me this idea to check out an interview that's at UNC in the... Southern Oral History Program. Ah, okay. So on that CD, you're going to hear her voice. It's an interview that was done in 1976, so okay. it's 40 years old. Okay. And uh, in my opinion... She 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 laid out something that would be exploding later because she set it up where if people wanted to use the interview, they could. Mm -hmm. So I'm the detonator. Okay. I'm here now. Okay, that and so sounds great. Here I am listening to this interview and I'm like oh. So I, I started pulling from that. I had to talk to UNC, then I had to talk back to Duke and we made the record the title of it is a conversation with Polly Murray produced okay. by DJ Green. Okay. So she's throughout the whole record. You hear her and I'm asking her questions. She's answering the questions and then the songs follow. Okay, so the project that you've completed, and we're going to do uh, one of the cuts, and you're going to do, let us know the intro, but mm -hmm. the the project's title, or the CD title is? A Conversation with Polly Murray. Okay, with Polly Murray, and um, intro the one that we're going to hear now. Okay, the, the song you're going to hear now is really, it's an autobiographical song, it's called The Imp the do the the crusader which are uh titles and coins that she came you know titles for for herself you know that dealt with her identity that dealt with gender and also you know that dealt with the work that she was doing and uh, i also have the artist that one of that i mentioned mitch Durrell is on this one that's featuring him and okay. he's singing okay and so the reason i say it's autobiographical because i wanted to explain some about her you know the fact that she was born in maryland 1910 right. uh she lost her mother at a very young right. age yeah. ended up moving to north carolina mm -hmm. uh, she got a namesake from her aunt yeah and then i wanted to you know but so i wanted to set that up first so people get a little bit you know about her then the rest of the song we start telling you what she did okay. you know like you know how she didn't give up her seat on her, but she was the first you know she did it before before Rosa Parks. I think it said um, 1940. I was like, 1940? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell us the name of it, and then we'll go to that. The name particular. of the song is The Imp, The Dude, The Crusader. All right. Who is it? Oh, is, that might be Dr. Miles. Yes. Okay. Good morning. Is it Dr. Lyles? Oh, who are you? Barbara Lyles. Uh, nice to have you on the line. We're going to intro you in about uh, three to four minutes. So all we need you to do is hold on and you'll be able to hear us and you should start hearing us as we uh, want to put you um, HBC. That's uh, right. you into what we are doing HBC now. HBC use open doors like usual. <laughs> but she still got to fight. Okay, hold on now. Game so you bring on when? Right after this. So you, we play the whole thing or? Just play up until time for you to do your break. Okay, we're coming up with yeah. yeah, so when we okay. do, do our break, our PSAs. So Dr. Dr. Lau is um, connected how? Yeah. How is Dr. Lau connected? Her, she, she's going to call me. Oh, she's not? Okay, she's not doctor. Okay. She's not doctor. Okay. Barbara. Barbara Lau. She's the director of the Polly Murray Project. Gotcha. At Duke. Okay. She'll call me because I gave she you. She already She's there. Oh. She's on the phone. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to so you need to be you come back and tell me to go to So what an interesting intro. We are delighted to have an opportunity to hear it and maybe we'll get back around to that one. I know there are a couple of others we want to um, get a little sample of and, and let people hear a little bit of your work. And um, we have on the line uh, Barbara Lau, who is the director of the Poly Project, right? Yes. Are you with us, Dr. Lau? I'm here, yes. I'm the director of the Poly Murray Project at the Human Rights Center. Okay, so what we're going to do, if you'll hold on, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more with you. Hold on. Uh, we'll return after these messages. Is she on my That's the website, hollywoodmurrayproject.org. Okay. I'm Sean University Radio, 88.9 FM, WSHA. The views and opinions expressed in this program are not necessarily those of Sean University, WSHA, or its underwriters. To call in, 1-800-241-0421. That's 1-800-241-0421. Are we on break now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello, this is Octavia Rainey, host a large of On the Line. Or an extra the line large. It depends. If it's pretty strong, maybe an extra large. Maybe just extra large. large. That's a large. Yeah, just a large. Okay, and that's a large. Hmm. Maybe I'll take an extra large. Okay, right, I think I bought one for you. Okay, wow. Cool. 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 No other. I, I'm actually, I got myself live. I'm actually on Facebook. I saw, watching. I could tell. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. you you would, and when I peeked over there, I said, okay, he's live Facebook. Yeah. So I didn't want to put you on the, you know, yeah. like, you know, That's like, cool. you know, but I had her on there. Yeah. So I got people watching. What's up, y'all? Yeah. Because I'm loving it when people don't know my face. Mm. Yeah, Jakina's on there. Congrats. Thanks, Jakina. Thanks, Angie. And okay, Elizabeth, I got that message. <laughs> This is Another epic, professor at NC State's Washington. Y'all playing Pokemon? Mm -hmm. No, I, mm -hmm. live streaming mm -hmm. on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We're not playing Pokemon. <laughs> Everybody's playing that game, man. Somebody fell off a coin. I heard. Yeah, I heard yes. that too. I got so that tweet. Oh, wow. Then I got something. What, what parents need to know about Pokemon Go? I'm like, parents need to know something. Oh, wow. One lady said, I don't want people on my lawn. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Kinesiotherapy, social work, divinity, religious education, and teacher education. Shaw University continues to have a significant economic impact, contributing $84 million to the Triangle region in 2013. The university is actively forging new partnerships that will play a critical role in creating an epic future for the university and its students. Learn more about our historic, forward-thinking university at Shaw U. Carolyn Bill just said, hey. <laughs> Thank you for returning with us here on Upfront. This morning, we're having great conversation and listening to music. And we're looking at how those uh, from our history, those within our communities, those that have made a difference in the world, how they actually influence art and artists. Our um, guests this morning are uh, Thomas Richard Easley, who's the lyricist, a uh, rap artist, pastor, uh, professor, um, as he said, Eagle Scout, uh, all around uh, good person here and dear friend. We also have with us uh, Professor Michelle Lanier, who works with the Center for Documentary Studies. Is that the right title? That's right. At Duke University. And she's enlightened um, me, uh, helping me see a broader view of documentary. I typically just think of film and maybe photographs or photography, but she's expanded that for us. And 
So we now know that uh, our good son and brother and friend is a documentary rabbi. So <laughs> we like that. Like and that. on the line, we just introduced to you Barbara Lau, who is the director for the Pauli Murray Project. Is that correct? Yes, yes, thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. So tell us about uh, the project and what that means and what's going on with it and maybe any um, recent accomplishments and or events that are um, being uh, planned or accomplished around the work that you do. Great, thank you. So the Pauli Murray Project is a part of the new Human Rights Center at the Dr. Franklin Humanities Institute in June. And we have been around since 2009, so we're celebrating our seventh year. Congrats. We are focused on lifting up the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Pauli Murray. And we do that in a number of ways. We do a lot of educational programming including last year's exhibit, Skin Crusader Nude Priest. We do public events similar to the program where um, uh, Thomas involved, got involved with the program called Speaking Power, a poetry, prose, and sermon slam. Uh, this fall, we'll be restaging the Pauli Murray play in collaboration with Hidden Voices. That's called Divide the Sun. And we've also spun off a small nonprofit And the effort there is to save Polly's childhood home, which is at 906 Carroll Street in Durham, and to create a national historic site at that, at that location so that he can continue this work. And we can continue this work in a place that Polly was shaped and loved and, uh, and, and really even nurtured to become the amazing activist, lawyer, poet, and priest. Uh, we we want to engage with history, so we also do a lot of community dialogue where we connect history to contemporary issues. This last spring we did a series of dialogues about faith communities and the idea of the faith communities that we want to live in, um, really in the spirit of how we effort uh, back in the 70s to open up faith leadership for women. Mm -hmm. That is very exciting work that you're doing, and congratulations on um, your seventh year. Uh, we know that oftentimes when ideas come to fruition and we think about them, to just have a little bit of longevity and legacy gives so much confidence to the community and to the supporters. So congratulations, and we're looking forward to that um, residence being completed and placed on the, um, uh, the National Historic Registry. What a wonderful opportunity. Let me get, give us some information about um, how we can connect with the project. Uh, we'll give that information again, but just at the top, how does one get more information? Maybe a website or a phone number? What is? What do you recommend for those who may want to connect with what you're doing? Well, thanks for asking that question. We do have an active website and a Facebook page. Our web address is pauliemurrayproject.org. And uh, at that point, people can choose to sign up for our email list. They can hear about all of these amazing programs. Uh, we also uh, do have a very active Facebook page, so if you want to go on and like it, we post a lot of updates there about the developments over at the house and some of the programs that we've been doing. And we, we try to post some photographs and videos, and you know, to just give folks a sense of you know what culinary events are all about and who shows up and what kinds of community they can. A participant in some of those. Um, one of the things that's very exciting is that, um, as you mentioned, getting that national recognition. So the house is actually being nominated as a national historic landmark, which Land. is a little bit, um, a little bit uh, higher up on the, the, the levels of recognition. And we're very excited about that. There are only 38 national historic landmarks in the state of North Carolina. 
Okay. That is great work, and we, we're we going to also post, and we'll come back and give in our final segment the contact information again, because the work you're doing, we want to keep uh, abreast of it, and that's an excellent way to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Professor Lanier, what's the difference between a historic site and a historic landmark, or is that a question I need to throw back to uh, Ms. Lau? I'm sure we could tag team it together. Excellent. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, something being listed on, so there's being listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Okay. Um, and there are quite a variety of structures, spaces, even landscapes that are listed on the National Register for Historic Spaces, Places. Um, the first uh, National Register uh, site in the state of North Carolina uh, was historic Halifax, uh -huh. which is in Halifax County. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people know it for the Halifax Resolves, which predates the Declaration of Independence. Exactly. But there are also some really important African American um, historic um, significances to that place. It was one of the most um, active sites for freedom seeking on the Underground Railroad in North Carolina. Um, and it's actually in the nation, one of the most active sites. Um, we know that in Halifax County, that is where the childhood home of Ella Baker, which of course so important to the, where we are right now here exactly. at Shaw University mm -hmm. in, in the history mm -hmm. of SNCC. Um, and then also the birthplace of John Chavis, John Chavis Park not being far yes. from here. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's where we can understand what a historic site is, but to have a national landmark Meet, status means not only is it significant to that community, not only is it significant to the state, it is nationally important. Got you. And um, Pauli Murray is and was internationally important. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we understand that. So thank you for sharing. So in thinking about how you connected with the center, with the project, with your own outreach, Talk a little bit about how one comes to making decisions about um, the cut that you uh, track that you um, told us uh, revolves around how she describes herself. Mm -hmm. And since that's new information, how does one take that for me? How does one take that and then decide, you know, I'm going with this and I'm going to wrap these words around um, my understanding of what that means? Well, so the the nth to do to crusaders, so here, here's a woman who um, had to push against societal norms because of things that were going on inside of her. And, but she still identified as a Christian um, you know, identify, you know, as, uh, you know, as African American. Uh, but, you know, she also had these other pieces to her identity, whether it was her gender, sexuality. And what I really felt like as I continue to study Paula Mary and even read her sermons, like I have a book for sermons. I'm, I was so blessed to get that. Is I saw a woman who was fighting to be a full person mm -hmm. and doing what she was doing, but being a full person doesn't always, isn't always accepted and taken in certain places. So she could maybe identify as being a woman who's attracted, you know, to other women, but that may not be accepted fully in church and church doctrine. Right. She may be an African American woman, but that may not be accepted at the time when she was working and helping Third Good Marshall and then with Brown versus Board of Education may not have been accepted in the courtroom, right. but she's still working and she's still bringing herself to it. So then here I am, an African American male uh, who is a Christian, who's a hip hop artist, who does secular work, uh, and 
there are times when I've been told that I shouldn't do that because I'm a Christian or because of my position in the church. But only humans separate that. And to me, God doesn't separate that because God sees it all as the same. So I'm here. I am trying to be a full person. Then also as an African-American male who's heterosexual, but who is an ally and an open ally for my brothers and sisters in the GLBTQ part of our community. I don't separate it. It's all the same community. We all need each other. We're all together. But I know that I'm also part of a community that doesn't share that same openness and that same desire for their part of our community and will use the Bible and has used the Bible to actually explain why they are against it. So then I see myself trying to be an advocate and also trying to be an ally while representing something that for me is very liberational, but at times it has also been oppressive. Yes. You see, and so here I am working through that myself. And then here is this, this individual who's a priest and a lawyer a college graduate, a civil rights activist, a poet, I'm a poet, and so she's doing all of this work and she's doing and she's doing it at a time. Yeah. When it wasn't popular, when the time it wasn't even safe. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean like the fact that I'm here, you're the host of this show and I'm here on your show. 50, 60 years ago, I don't think it would have been that way. So we've made some progress, we've made some steps, but we still have a long way to go. And so this is a battle that I constantly deal with i'm not conflu confused or conflicted with what's going on inside of me and how i feel about the human community mm -hmm. but i know that i'm part of something that has not fully thought it out and has not fully worked it out itself and so there's a lot of contention you know and there's a lot of you know well just tension period around especially around issues around GLBTQ. But keep in mind the same doctrine that we use to show that we should be, that some people use to show that they'll be against LGBTQ. It's the same doctrine that was used to show that black people were less than and that we were inferior. So that's why I go, wait a minute, why are we not thinking? You know, we, we hear this love message in church and we tell people to go out into the world and take this gospel out. But while we're telling them to take this gospel out, people don't realize that you're also being that sometimes taught this message, this message of hate because no one is fully discussing how do we embrace our brothers and sisters as part of this community? It's just take this scripture and then that's it. But no one knows the culture of what was going on at the time when those words were coined. We don't even know the full translation. And the fact if your religion has to be translated to you, there got to be some pieces of it that's not for you. And so I'm not one who's blind to that. I mean, black people were in existence 92,000 years on this planet before at least we understand that there was, quote unquote, the white gene. So there's a lot of information and history that I think that, that definitely predates Christianity and predates religion that for a lot of us we don't know and it's, and it's challenging because I think that we're not being pushed to think, we're being pushed to believe and to follow what I consider to be more traditions than allowing progressive revelation to come and allow God to, to continue speaking because God isn't done speaking. Well, that's a whole different conversation that we could take a couple of hours on when we start talking about the faith community and the scripture and control and the whole idea of love, which supersedes, surpasses anything else. When we look at the great commandments, especially out of the, the uh, commissions and commands out of the New Testament, that love peace just supersedes anything. So regardless of people's feelings, the thing that really caught my idea, and I'd like you to think about highlights before we go to the next uh, track that I want you to introduce, is that oftentimes as humans, we allow those things that oppress and suppress us to prevent us from being our fully actualized self, that mm -hmm. we fail to pursue those things that interest us. We fail to pursue and excel in those things mm -hmm. that are even important to us because we have this sense of oppression and suppression and just mm -hmm. uh, struggling with uh, who I am, uh, what my identity is, uh, who has hurt me. Mm -hmm. But Dr. As you say, St. Pauli uh, Murray just exceeded and just surpassed all of those things. Mm -hmm. So the engineer is telling us we need to take a break. I want mm -hmm. him to, while we're doing the PSAs, to play that second track. Mm -hmm. And also, when we come back, you can talk to us a little bit about that. Okay. Uh, we'll return.
You're listening to Upfront on Sean University Radio. They can't hear us. I'm an Episcopalian. Are you Episcopalian? So I can speak to that. And I just got back from South Africa where I was there for two and a half weeks. We're with a multinational, multiracial group. Okay. And we were talking about dismantling racism. So Pauli Murray was there with us. Okay. Yeah. So I can speak to that if, you, if okay. it's appropriate. Okay. I had to go back and bring my young friend. Wow. Young ER2. We'll play this and then we'll come back. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, we want to be oh, like. <laughs> You're listening to Upfront on Sean University Radio 88.9 FM WSHA. The views and opinions expressed in this program are not necessarily those of Sean University WSHA or its underwriters. To call in 1-800-241-0421. That's 1-800-241-0421. So we're back and thank you for staying with us. And yeah, we like Polly and some of us really want to be like Polly. I like that, <laughs> Rashad. Thanks. So our guest this morning, uh, Thomas Rashad Easley, Professor Michelle Lanier, and Ms. Barbara Lau, who are all engaged in some way in the life legacy and sharing that with us around uh, Pauline Murray, uh, born um, Anna Pauline Murray, correct? And yeah, 1910. Um, yeah, 1910. So that particular cut is kind of uh, obvious. You're sharing some of who she is. So I want the three of you in our last segment to think about one or two highlights from her life. Uh, we're going to share your contact information as we prepare to um, complete this conversation that really was quite short for me. So um, I'm going to go to Ms. Lau, who's been uh, waiting patiently. Share a couple of highlights from her life, your years of being engaged in the Polly Murray Project in Durham, North Carolina. What stands out for you? Well, that's a great question, and it's always hard to answer because Polly did so many things. Um, there's a great new book out about Polly uh, that's called The Firebrand and the First Lady about her correspondence and relationship with First Lady mm -hmm. Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. A poet, uh, a historian, a writer. You know, I think we think about the arenas in which she worked and how she 
brought women to the attention of the civil rights movement, how she broke barriers in the faith community, all that. But I think in her heart, she was always a writer. So I often think about her book of poetry, called Dark Testament, uh, that she was so proud of that was published in 1970. Uh, very hard to get these days, mm-hmm. unfortunately. But uh, because of the work of, of Thomas and others, you know, more people are hearing about her poetry. So I think that's one thing that really stands out for her. You know, there were other things just about her life. Um, you know, she was a, a, a lifelong dog lover, always had a faithful hmm. friend with her, even took her dog to Ghana. Um, oh. She went there to, to teach in the law school, um, you know, constitutional law in Ghana. So, you know, I think she, she did all of these things. That's you know, we true. We all have to think about the, the, the human side, you know, and, well said. She really aimed for an integrated body, mind, and spirit. And I think that's the kind of life that we all would like to live. And we use fancy words to talk about all that now, intersectionality and mm-hmm. all these mm-hmm. things. But really, when we think about it, you know, Polly lived that. And so she just really uh, talked and wrote and made theory and, and developed ideas based on her own lived experience, which I think is a Good, good, good highlights, especially that whole English writing piece. I saw that was her undergraduate major, and I'm an English major, too. And I think English majors make very good, well-rounded people. Okay, that was a commercial, so I'm going to cut it out. But thank you for reminding us about that. (laughs) Professor uh, Lanier, you mentioned that you're also Episcopalian. Um, and we ask for highlights. Um, I don't know if you want to tie it into the faith community, but what kind of stands out uh, from her life for you? For me, uh, I certainly feel like I have a few personal connections to her. Being an African-American Episcopalian is one of them. I also was an English major. Hi. (laughs) Hey. English majors Mm -hmm. represent. Mm -hmm. And she also is a member of my sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Um, I feel like I've been walking in her footsteps, humbly inspired by her. She lived in my hometown, Columbia, South Carolina. And I am particularly inspired by so much of who she is, the first African-American woman priest to be Mm -hmm. ordained in the Episcopal Church. And then her work in the 50s um, is so powerful. But particularly, I'll just share a little bit of a poem that always resonates with me that she wrote called Prophecy. I'll just read the the end. Give me a song of hope and a world where I can sing it. Give me a song of faith and a people to believe in it. Give me a song of kindliness and a country where I can live it. Give me a song of hope and love and a brown girl's heart. To hear it. Oh, I like that. Yes. Okay. Now, is that from the compilation or the anthology? In, in Dark that, Testament. Dark Testament. Absolutely. Okay, we're gonna. I remember that, but I'm. I have to go back and revisit that. And um, her poetry is featured on the PaulieMurrayProject.org website. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to, as we go through this last segment, as we said before, we're gonna try to bring all of this together and continue to give people um, the websites and the areas that they can connect. So, Thomas Rashad, for you, we listened to that I Want to Be Like Polly, Mm -hmm. and um, evidently your work confirms that you have quite a few highlights Mm -hmm. from her life to to even guide your decision to engage in this particular project. So, what just speaks to you would you say that this particular track resounds with you more than others? Or um, what What kind of guided you and, and, and kind of hit you where you needed that particular motivation, that muse even, to generate all of this work? Well, the more I learned about 
St. Mary, I, I saw that I had a lot of parallels, you with know, her. like with her. And, and and in particular, when I read, like, when I read her sermons and when I read her poetry, what I, to me, like, what I saw was definitely struggle, overcoming the struggle. But to me, she also had the spirit of understanding. Mm -hmm. Like, she understood, like, where she was. She understood the time that she was in. So even though she was an activist and, from what I saw, didn't play, was serious about mm -hmm. equality and equity, you know, both two, two different things. So even though she was serious about that, she understood that she grew up in a time where her people have been oppressed, you know, put down. So you can't just walk into a room of African American probably people at that time and say certain things that did with revolution and then you know, I think everybody's gonna, you know, like jump on the bandwagon, mm -hmm. you know, because if your mindset is not there, then you're not going to jump. But it didn't say that she did away with her community. You see, it's just that, you know, she she did things that she had to do for herself. Now what does that mean to me? When I look at that aspect of it, that reminds me actually a lot of Jesus. Because Jesus was doing the exact same thing. I think what she probably, in a lot of ways, what she got it from was was from Jesus. Here's Jesus coming, New Testament, a new covenant. He's trying to teach the people about the kingdom of God and love. Mm -hmm. And the laws that they learn from the Old Testament in a lot of ways pushes against that. And the way that they're, you know, and the way that they are enacting it out pushes against that. So he's trying to teach them something new. But he didn't do away with them either because he understood mm -hmm. who it was he was talking to. And he understood these are my people. These are, you know, like this is my creation. So when I look at the way that I talk to people and even people that I love, but I know that don't support all of the positions that I have, whether it's around sexuality, gender orientation, the work I do in diversity, I still have love for them because I understand because I was brought up in the South, you know, so I was brought up with messages of sexism, misogyny, uh, you know, that men are here and women are here. I was brought up with that, didn't agree with it. Uh, you know, I don't believe in treating people differently because of parts of who they are that they do not control and parts of who they are that I don't understand. And so that, and so uh, when I made this record, and in particular about that song, Be Like Polly, at the end of it, you'll hear the piece of the sermon that I did at the Sermon Slam. And I say, I invite you to be like me and Polly to work to be like Jesus. Uh huh. You know, and yeah. so throughout the rest of the album, every song that, that you hear on this project when it comes out, and I want you all to go get it. Uh, when we do bring it out, every song you hear a song that's about Polly Murray, like autobiographical. Then after that, you hear how we take that, like what we learn about her, and apply it. Yes. You see, so then it'll be like we have a song that's called Stand Up, which Mitch Durrell is on that. And we're telling people to stand up, speak out. Yeah. You hear something, you see something that bad is going on, whether it's in your community or outside, you got to stand up. We have to do something different. The next one is Ride It Out. We have a lot of people who have parts of themselves that are not. You know, they're not edified in our society, and in particular for our brothers and sisters who are gay and lesbian. And I'm saying, ride it out. Live out your life. I know that is hard because yeah. our society does not support, you know, and really get behind. You know, even things, I know, you know, what our current administration has done, but we still have a long way to go. And I'm saying, now, Polly could ride it out at a time when laws were not on her side, schools were not on her side, church wasn't completely on the side, That's you know, true. all of that, then if she can do it, look, y'all, we can do it yeah, now. Yeah, role modeling. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. and then I even have a song Pioneers. in there that's called Hey Leader. Pi oh, pi see, you can just talk about the doctors and mm -hmm. Pioneer. And I talk about Polly Murray as a leader and how we're called to be leaders and I align it with my uncle, Reverend James Orange. So the song is called Hey Leader because that's a term that he always called people. Every time he say, Hey Leader, Hey Leader, and it sounds cool, but what he's really saying is I'm calling what I see in you. Right. So when I call you leader, that's what you're supposed to act like if you're not acting like it. Or I'm calling you that because you're acting like it. That's so true. I'm calling something out of you. I look at Polymer, I see the exact same thing. For her to go where she went, she impacted the policies of the Episcopal Church. She did that. That's, that's how true. she became the priest. Exactly. Did it? She didn't walk in there and just say, yeah, let's do it. Exactly. Mm -mm. No, she had to work through that. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, people... As we see, you know, as we bump up against walls, that's not a wall for us to bump up and say, oh, that's how it is. No, that's a wall that needs to be pushed down, and we can do it with love and with brilliance. And she did it, and we can do it with our community. Right. And she did that. I mean, thank you, Thurgood Marshall, for winning Brown versus Board of Education. Yeah. But that wouldn't have been that wouldn't have happened if he hadn't gotten what he called the Bible from Polly Murray. Yeah, and that's what he, yeah. his own quote. Mm -hmm. So we're here near the end of the program. I'm going to ask each of our guests again to give their contact information quickly, and if you have anything 
upcoming, an event that you'd like to share with us, give us that all in about a minute. And then, uh, Thomas, you will be last because you'll mm -hmm. give us a little intro to the last cut we'll play as we um, as we end uh, up front. Yes, ma'am. So, um, Director Barbara Lau, uh, give us your contact information again for the Polly Mary uh, project and any um, pending, impending, imminent event you may have with, between now and the early fall. Excellent. And Professor Lanier? Yeah, so if you want to continue to learn about the expansive definitions of documentary work, you can go to documentarystudies.duke.edu. There are educational opportunities for all people. And I do want to take a moment to give a shout out to the Episcopal Diocese of North Carolina for the Lift Every Voice program that just returned from South Africa. We are dismantling racism as a group of faith-based people across nations. Yeah, I love Episcopalian. I am not even Zion, but... I love St. Ambrose. All right. All right. <laughs> yes. shout, shout out to Jamal. Exactly. Yes, Jamal Taylor. Yes. Exactly. Barbara Taylor. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, Rashad, you have a couple of things to do. You know, yes, contact information okay. and introduce our last uh, yes, track before we um, we phase out. Okay. You can uh, reach me at Thomas R. Easley at easleybranch.com. That's E-A-S-L-E-Y. My website is RashadEasley.com. And I am on Facebook as Rashad Easley. I'm on Twitter as Rashad Ease. And I'm also on Instagram as Rashad Ease. And I'm on Snapchat as Rashad Ease. So Got you can it. find me. Uh, the the uh, song that, that, that's getting ready to come up now, the name of it is Identify. And in this song, it really, it's really funny. I was done with this album. And then DJ Green came to me and said, hey. I, I need I, one more. I, I, you need one more. I, I got something that I want to throw at you. That's that's what he said to me. And I'm like, I'm done. I'm I'm finished, you know, because making records, it takes a lot of work and money. Yeah. You do it right. And I heard it, and immediately I was like, oh, I got it. And it only took me five minutes to write the song. Okay. And uh, another member of the Dean's List, you're getting ready to go to Texas on Monday, Kiara Hicks, Key. She, uh, I, I have her on this song. She was on Southern Black Gentleman. Uh, oh. she, she's a poet, a dancer, singer, and, and rapper. She's all of that. And so I have her... Uh, on this and she's one of my students. So we have less than a minute. So I'm going to say when spider webs unite, we can uh, we can uh, tie up a lion as we phase out with identity. Identify. Identify. Identify the empty. Yay. Identify individually. Is that Tavia here? We are. Thank y'all for tuning in. Okay. Thanks for your comments, Michelle. Sir. Thank you, everybody. Black fist. <laughs> Always.